So welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AED744. So today, guys, we'll be doing our Copa America tier list with Silva. And today we'll be breaking down all 60 nations. So before we get started, let's do a quick overview of what each category is like. So we got the favorites. That's easy. Like, we expect them to win. Contenders is like, they can win, um, but it's they're not expected to win. Uh, Dark Horse is like, they're going to make it far, uh, but they don't have a good chance of winning. Quarterfiles max. We don't see them more doing much more than quarterfiles. And the vibes, they're just here to make it their numbers. They're just here to participate. So, Silva, Matt, give like a quick introduction to the audience of who you are and um, at which nation you're going to support the Copa America. Well, some people know me by saying Jose on uh, Discord, but I go by Silva most of the time. And yeah. I was on some of AD's videos before in the past about like bars or other things. And those people who know me know that I'm going to support Brazil in the Copa America. Yeah. The Silasau, man. The Silasau. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, and uh, we're going to go, we're going to try to like go from like t worst to top. So, we're going to try to like build our way up, if that makes any sense. So, that's how we're going to go through the nations. Okay. So, Silva, um, for me, the worst nation in the Copa America, in my opinion, is Bolivia. Do you agree? It's between them or Venezuela, honestly. But I have like you, a, you, I have you can a, you can put Bolivia because they're pretty much nothing outside their altitude stadium. Yeah, <laughs> and so I don't they, even think we just, have to. Yeah, they're just there for the money. They're just there to like collect their bag and leave after three games. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's much more explanation to have. Although I did hear, uh, I do want to talk about this real quick. One of Bolivia's best players, I think, is um, he's a striker. I forgot his name. Maybe you remember. Uh, oh, he's, Marcelo. I think, retired. Yeah, Marcelo Moreno retired. Yeah. That was, like, that was like their only good player, honestly. <laughs> wow. Dang, that's that's sad. I remember him at Flamengo. He was the only good Bolivian player. So, yeah. Maybe if, maybe if they had a... I'll, I'll just be fair. Even with him, I, I don't think they would have a chance. Yeah, but now with even, <laughs> yeah, even Even with him, they didn't do anything in Copa America in the past. Yeah. And uh, yeah, now, even without him, it's just worse. So, like... <laughs> Uh, yeah okay let's uh move and then shall we so the next country we got here it is um let's do uh let's do uh let's do uh venezuela. let's see what's in it venezuela now i feel like i feel like venezuela for me could make a quarterfinals i mean given the group they're in is it is a it is it isn't too it, it, it isn't like it's a it's a decent group for them it's, it couldn't it wasn't the worst group you know I mean, to be fair to Venezuela, like, and the qualifiers haven't been doing that bad. But, like, when these kind of tournaments come in Copa America, I, am, I don't expect them to go, like, quarterfinal or anything like that. And, like, the, who's in the group? Mexico and Ecuador? Yeah, Mexico, Ecuador, Jamaica. Yeah, I don't see them going I, top two qualifiers, and I don't see Venezuela going to quarterfinal over at Mexico or Ecuador. So I'm probably mm. going to put them in the vibes as well. They're just there to get their money. Uh, I feel like they can make a quarterfinals because um, um, because of the fact of how bad uh, Mexico and Equ because of how bad Mexico is right now. And also remember, all these nations are inconsistent. There's like like so, I think they can make a quarterfinals, but I don't see them doing much more in the quarterfinals. Listen, if Venezuela, quarterfinals makes, whoever whoever lets Venezuela make the quarterfinals, either Mexico or Ecuador, they have to be ashamed of themselves. Because, like, yeah. I do not expect Venezuela in the quarterfinal. Hmm. Okay, so we have a little disagreement here. So, hmm, how are we going to compromise this? Uh, I, don't know. I feel like. I mean, like, Venezuela aren't that type of team to, like, really make the quarterfinal in the past, unless it was, like, a, like three teams going through in the group, which that was, like, the only time they probably would go to the quarterfinal in recent times. But. Like, I don't, I, I just don't see it. Yeah, and you know, to be the fair, pre I, the, pre the pressure is going to get to them, and they're just there for the vibes, really. And and remember, guys, remember, this is something that um, is also worth noting. Tournament football and qualifiers are a bit different. It's not the same. So maybe, I, we're ba maybe I'm basing too much on the qualifiers because we don't know, because we, the, for what we know, teams may not be good in the tournament when you get to the actual tournament for the qualifiers. So, you know, so, yeah. Um, okay, let's put Venezuela. Let's say that I feel like vibes a bit harsh, though. 
Okay, let's put them like the low end of quarterfinals. Like the, the, the just about. I would put I would put them vibe. It's not even disrespectful. That's their level for me. Okay, okay. We'll put we'll them the, we'll put them the top level of vibes then. Like they can ju- they can just about make. Okay. Mm, all right. And then and probably, yeah, some... <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> probably next one. And vibes will probably be like Costa Rica. Yeah. Okay. I do want to talk about Venezuela real quick. Soltaldo has been really good. Uh, he's a good player. I do want to mention him real quick. <laughs> oh yeah, Soltaldo. I, I know him. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next up is Costa Rica. Uh, yeah, I think this goes without saying. They're they're here for vibes. The only thing that's going for them is Keller Navas and. He's not gonna be enough. <laughs> is he even getting called up now? I think he should be called up. But is he though? Because like I, I've seen like a couple Costa Rica games and like Kevin Alves is not there. He played. He played the qualifiers against. Uh, I think was at Honduras. I think so. I think it, right, if so he's fit, he should be. Yeah. He should probably go. He's their best player. Yeah. So yeah, Costa Rica for me. They're just here to make up the numbers, and the group is way too hard. And to be honest, even if they were in a different group, it probably would make a difference. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, this is this is gonna be like a team where everyone are just gonna try to score goals. Okay, let's move past that. Let's move on to uh, let's move on to. I think we should talk about Panama. Uh, Par- All right, yeah, Panama. Yeah, Panama uh, for me. Uh, their best player is Carlos Kilia, and obviously. Uh, uh, they got some good players, but really the group is too hard. I don't think they're going to do much. Um, they're going the vibes. Um, yeah, I mean, you would agree with me, right? Yeah, I don't see anything good about Panama either. Yeah. So, yeah, actually, let me... Uh, yeah, this ad is kind of annoying me. <laughs> but okay, we'll just ignore it, I guess. Is there a guy that like, closes ad or something? I don't know. Okay, okay. You I, I like did that way, Doing ad blocker or something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I I, I, right. I close the ad. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. Right, Jamaica. Next. Ooh, Jamaica. Okay. Now Jamaica for me is a weird one because I feel like their talent. They should like if we're going by, like it, it depends on what we're going by. If we're going by potential, they should have enough. Who, like, I think quarterfinals who, isn't doable. Who, who's in the group? Jamaica. It's Mexico. Mexico, Ecuador, Venezuela. I don't know. They could maybe because, like, I know they have a couple of good players, but like at the same time, like they're just the federations like, a mess. All, they're all over the place. Their federations a mess. Yeah, like they're all over and, the place. Yeah, and it feels like every time you have your, uh, every time you put your faith in Jamaica, they always underperform. What I at least I've seen in recent years, Concacaf tournaments. You know. Yeah, and like it's either like vibes or maybe like a small chance they can make quarterfinal mm-hmm. but i would okay. probably i would probably put them in vibes as well okay um which nation do you think is, has a better chance to make the quarterfinals jamaica or venezuela mm, that's a hard one yeah that's tough <laughs> but like and these type of tournaments, you need like the players that can that have the talent that could turn up. And I think uh, Jamaica has more of it than Venezuela do. Yeah, you know what? Let, let's put Jamaica quarterfinals at best, but they're not making the past the quarters. Um, yeah, and they have they have do have the Iceland coach? I forgot his name. What's the, do you remember his name at the time? I forgot his name at the time. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I remember he did really well for Iceland 2018 World Cup. You know, so maybe Jamaica can have that kind of role. You know, be the underdog, yeah, and they maybe. have some good players, obviously. You know, Bailey, Pinnock, uh, you know, uh, Andre Blake, you know, and these kind of players. And to be fair, they did well in the CONCACAF Nations League, the last, the recent edition, the one we just, the semifinals. You can, put, you can probably put them quarterfinal max, but like, I can see it happen, but I don't expect, I don't expect it to happen because I have Mexico and Ecuador over them, but it's possible. Like I, like I can see one of Mexico or Ecuador, like screwing up. And then yeah, Jamaica yeah. taking advantage. Yeah. So Jamaica, man. Yeah. They, they can definitely do it if they could get their if, if they are if they could get their act together. <laughs> okay, let's move yeah. to the next one. We have let's move to I think we should talk about next is Peru, right? Yeah, Peru. Uh Peru, man. I, I don't know how to feel about this one because historically wise, they've done really well the last couple of Americas. You made who's, the semifinals. Who, yeah, who, who's in Peru's group this year? Argentina. Argentina. 
uh, Chile and Canada. Mm, oh yeah, vibes. Honestly, mm. Peru are not like. Listen, they have a new coach. The coach that they had in the last two Copa America, Ricardo Gareca. He's, he's, he's a very good coach. coach. He is a good coach, but he's not there anymore at Peru. Yeah, he's actually I, at I'm the just... rival. <clears throat> At the rivals country. At the rivals right now, Chile. Yeah, we'll talk about Chile in a bit, but um, yeah, for Peru, man. I the, my biggest issue with Peru is that their defense is good, their midfield's good. It's just the goal scoring is a big issue for me. I, I don't know if you, you know, agree with me on this. Yeah, pa- Paulo Guerrero is not there anymore. He's old. Farfan is way gone. They have La Padula, but it's like, I don't think they can trust on them to like score the goals. Yeah, I mean. They're probably the best hope is at Vincula, which is <laughs> really sad because he's a... Yeah, Vincula is probably the best goal scorer. And he's a right back. Yeah, he's like a, a winger and a wing ba- uh, a, a right back. And he's not really a striker. You know, so that, that's yeah. kind of my worry. <laughs> so, I, I'm yeah, not for even Peru. Sure, I'm not even sure Christian Cueva, I think he still gets called up and like he's washed as hell right now. Yeah, I think for Peru, I think they're going to... The only thing that's given me... The only thing that I see going for Peru is the fact that the historically done really won the last Copa Americas. And I think the last time Peru did get grouped in the Copa America was, I think, it's been like 10 years, I think. It's been a long time since they've got grouped in the Copa America. Maybe you can fact me check me on this. But they haven't got grouped in the Copa America for a very long time. But yeah, remember, guys. 2019, 21, they didn't. 2016, they didn't. They robbed Brazil. But we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and they went through 2015. I'm not sure. But yeah, I can yeah. definitely say those three, they went through. Yeah, so yeah, they haven't got grouped in the Copa America for a long time. So I think for Peru, for me, I think it's vibes. Um, I think well, let's put them. We'll put them above Bolivia and Costa Rica. I mean, to be um, fair to Peru, like in these type of tournaments, you need to have a clutch goalkeeper, and like Pedro Gallese yeah. is a very good goalie, and he's still like yeah, starting for them. He's he's like their captain right now. They yeah. also have Renato Tapia, the midfielder, plays at Celta Vigo. He's decent for them. So, oh, wait, how yeah. could I forget his name? Uh, Andre Carrillo is their attacker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, let's uh, let's move to the next country. Uh, let's move to Paraguay. I think Chile. <laughs> mm, you really think Chile? I think Chile is worse. <laughs> Ooh. Um, so, okay, here's the thing with Chile. Um. I I'm kind of unsure how I feel because now they have Gorek as our coach. Because I'm I'll be that honest with you. Before, with, that that is true. Yeah, because let me let's be real. Without Goreka, I would I would have a very different opinion on Chile. <laughs> <laughs> very different opinion. Um, and Chile, obviously, the thing that's going for them is that they have some young players coming through. I think they have a great midfielder coming through. It's, I think it's a Mitch line forgot his name, and they have some young attackers from Colo Colo. But I think for Chile, man, the the issue for them is. How will those how, will Greco be able to m- mesh the old players with younger players? I leave think, up to the combination. Rate? I think Gareca could do something, but I think it'll be after Copa America because, like, he came very recently. Yeah, it's a bit too soon. And I like, think if he had came a like, bit earlier, yeah, and like he's not going to like bend the old players like as soon as the tournament starts. He's gonna do it after it. Yeah. So for Chile, I think they can be a dark horse. I do think they have a potential possibility, but the issue for me is that I don't know. I, I'm I'm kind of, I'm 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 like torn here. Like, do I put them dark horse or quarterfinals? Because I think it's one of the I two think for me. Quarter, I think quarterfinal is good for them. I don't yeah. see them going anything past quarterfinal. I mean, like, yeah. they, I, mean, I I still think they still call up Alexis Sanchez right now. As yeah, attacker. Alexis Sanchez. And dude, I saw Bravo was still starting for them in the friendlies. Yeah, Claudio I think Bravo. Is still, yeah, Claudio Bravo is still their goalkeeper. Uh, Vidal is still there, and their best yeah. player is probably Eric Pulgar. But like, he's injured right now. He might he might not even go to Copa America. Yeah. So I I think for uh, Chile, man, I think and like I for me, I've I, seen, go ahead. Yeah, I think for the thing is, if Goreka came in earlier, like let's say after the uh, before the World Cup qualifiers began and had more time, then I could have potentially put them dark horse. I just think it came a bit too late for them to be a dark horse, in my opinion. So, yeah, like Goreka's a good coach. Like he's really a quality coach. Yeah, he's a coach. great coach. But like he came a little bit too late and like 
with a nation like Chile, like you're not going to bin your best players as soon as the tournament starts. Yeah. You're gonna do it after it. Like this is not like a big nation like Brazil or Argentina where you can make both bold decisions. So I think like he'll still call up those players, but like after it he'll like tell them you gotta retire. Yeah. I, I let's put I think we should put Chile above Jamaica. Do you agree? Yeah, I will put them above Jamaica as well. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next a country we got here. It is um I I think it's gonna be Paraguay, right? Yeah, Paraguay. <laughs> All right, Paraguay, man. Um so obviously as a Brazilian man, Paraguay probably gives you PTSD. <laughs> I know they do. <laughs> like they're not a, the thing with Paraguay, and they're still like this every time. They're that team. I know like they don't have the names that people know, but Every time you play against them, they're super, super defensive. Yes. They are very defensive. They love to, like, foul a lot. They will frustrate you a lot. They're aggressive. They're very aggressive. So much thug players in their team. Gustavo <laughs> Gomez, their center back, the, oh, he's the captain for them. He loves he loves to be the aggressor. Yeah. And the thing with him <laughs> is, like, the Paraguayans call him Sergio Ramos because he sometimes likes to go up and he sometimes likes to go up and score goals. Even you know, he even takes penalties. He even takes penalties for Paraguay. Wow, that, that's crazy. <laughs> man, that that's crazy. I'm not yeah, surprised, he takes, man. He takes penalties as well. But like, yeah, the thing with Paraguay, like they're in a difficult group as well. Like they have Brazil, they have Colombia, and like they uh, can, Costa Rica. they can, yeah, and Costa Rica, but. We have them. We have them in vibes. But the thing with Paraguay, they can make the quarterfinal. I don't think they will, but it's totally possible they can. Oh yeah, yeah. Like um, like I said, like like the thing with Paraguay, what's going for them is that they're really good defensively. It's just that attack exactly. is horrendous. That attack, that attack exactly. is garbage. I, that attack exactly. is horrendous. Like like they can probably like get a draw against either Brazil or Colombia, and then they got to win the next. Like Costa Rica, let's assume they win. If they get a draw against either Brazil or Colombia, then they got to win the next game. Yeah. So you're saying that this group could come down to goal difference? They could, could. yeah. Like, they could. Like, for second place or even top spot, like, it could even come down to goal difference. Because, like, this is, this is like, not even two legs. Remember, this is, like, only one. One matches. Like, one yeah. matches. And like, Paraguay, they can do it. Yeah, the, the only issue I have is their attack is so bad because Almiron's just he's just uh, he's just not. Yeah, performing. like Almiron, like he's not a goal scorer. <laughs> yeah, he's like and then one they on the Ciso. wing. Yeah, yeah, and on the wings it's like they have good wingers, but like only the techiness. Like they're not finishers. Like in Cisco, it's not that guy you expect yeah. to score goals, or like uh, Almiron is not that goal scorer either. Yeah, so Paraguay for me, I mean. I think they have a better chance than Jamaica. Would you agree? Or would yeah, you put Jamaica would. above? No, I'd put Paraguay above Jamaica. Yeah, I think I would agree, actually. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Paraguay, man, they, they could uh, do it. And, um, I've heard some... Uh, they. Yeah. So, okay, let's move to the next one. So, the next one, I think it's, it's going to be Canada, right? Yeah, sure, you can do Canada. All right, so Canada... They have their new coach, Jesse Marsh. Obviously, it's going to be you – know, obviously, he came in pretty late uh, because their old coach was bad. The, the interim coach they had was terrible. He wasn't good. And obviously, got some good players like Alfonso Davis, Estacchio, Kyle Lauren, John the David, Crapu, the goalkeeper. The problem with this Canadian team is that I just I, they, they've just kind of regressed ever since the World Cup. Like I feel like John Herdman made this team so good counterattacking-wise. And my problem with Canada is that they try to play too much possession ball at the World Cup, and we saw how that failed badly. It didn't really work. Would you agree? Yeah. In order to play possession football, you need to have really like good players on the ball. Yeah. And, like, for Canada, for Canada, they're not like Spain or Brazil or Argentina. They don't have like those technical players. For them, like counterattacking football transitions, yes. that works better for them. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, like with Jesse Marsh coming in, I saw him try to do like actually, I, I, I saw him at the RB Leipzig. I think he was trying to play like what was it possession based or was it? I think he was trying to play possession based football at Leipzig or was it counter attack? I forgot. I forgot to be fair. Do you remember? I'm not. I didn't see myself at uh, Leipzig, but I remember at Leeds like he was something like that, like someone possession and 
also counter-attacking. Yeah. But it didn't go well at Leeds. Yeah, it didn't go well. I mean, that's why I got sacked. So for yeah. the, the, thing with, the thing with Canada is that this is a doable group for them. Second place is very up, much up for, for the grabs. And I think for Canada, I, I, I think for me, they can be a dark horse. Um, but the problem is that I don't know what type of style they're gonna play in this Copa America because if they try to play possession based, I think it'll go terribly. If they try to play, if they play counter attack, they could make they could be they can make a sneaky run. Yeah, I would probably say like quarterfinals as well for Canada. Yeah, uh, I think I think they have a better chance at Jamaica. Would you agree? Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah. So. Yeah, Canada. I mean, I, I put them... they, need, they probably they probably should play Alfonso Davies at left wing or left wing back. Yeah, yeah. Because he's like he's a better attacker than he is a defender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. I mean, he plays a he plays a forward for Canada. So yeah, for Canada, yeah. man. Let's see if they can do this. All right, now we move. On. Now we have like uh, the big ones. <laughs> okay, let's let's the go to Mexico ones. next. Should we do Mexico next? We can do Ecuador or Mexico. I don't. I don't know. All right, let's do Mexico since I already put them in there. All right. uh, so Mexico. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. Mexico. This this general this team is just bad. Yeah, they're like, pretty disappointing. Like they yeah. ever since ever since they won the Gold Cup in 2019, everything just went down. Yeah, like, they've been and, really disappointing, and there's no signs of any improvement at all. So yeah, that's the thing. The thing is, like, they have so they have such a big hair. Uh, they're so big historically speaking. They have so much heritage that that you can't ignore that. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter how bad they are. They always have the heritage aspect. I mean, would you agree, right? Yeah, they do. But we saw like against USA, the Nations League, the Gold Cup when uh, USA had their team. Yeah, the heritage didn't go their way because <laughs> if it was going by heritage, they would smack USA. But yeah, that's true. That's, true. That's, that's the other way around now. Yeah, and I look at the group that Mexico is in. This is a very difficult group because this group is very competitive. Uh, it's very uh, much open, and the thing for Mexico is that if they are, the thing is like it really depends how they finish because if they finish second place, they're gonna have to most likely play against the, one of the favorites, and you are that's gonna be tough. Now if they top the group. They could maybe make they're gonna, it they're still gonna face they're, they're still gonna face Argentina, I think. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. There. So it's like I don't see them going past the quarterfinals. Hmm. Do we put them in dark horse? I would put them in quarterfinal max, but you can put dark horse because it is possible to get like a favorable quarterfinal, and they can somehow go to the semis. Mm, I think I'm, but I'm not like, sure, listen, man. With Me but with Mexico, it's like they are disappointing to me. Like, yeah, I don't see them doing well at this. And listen, in Copa America recently, they don't do that well. Like the last yeah, thing they I mean, were doing, 2016, <laughs> we know what happened. Like, yeah, we, they we, can, we're, they we're can, not going to remind the Mexicans. They, they can always they can step out against the Concacaf nations, but when the real ones come, the South Americans, they are going to struggle. Yeah, it's just it's just a like, giant brewer. Yeah, I've been watching some of Mexico's games and like I'm not impressed. Like they are struggling to like teams like Honduras. Imagine against yeah. like Chile or something. Like, yeah, I think Gareca against this. Yeah, I remember last time they played against Chile. Uh, we <laughs> we know what happened. We're not going to mention the score. We're not going to mention the score. We're not going to mention the score, but we know you guys know very well what happened. And like so, I can't even I I can't even see Ecuador like beating Mexico at the Copa America. Yeah, and for Mexico, the best players are obviously Edson Alvarez and obviously uh, Santiago Jimenez. And then did you hear? I've been hearing some news that Guillermo Ochoa might not be selected, which I think is crazy. I mean, they have to move on from him, but like, this is the Copa America you're talking about. I got you're gonna a couple, at like, least you're, you're going to yeah. be a player like that. Like right before a big tournament, do it after it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like this is the Copa America, man. This is huge. Like you, like, hardly find the Copa America. And Mexico, and Mexico is not a big nation like Brazil, Argentina, that they can just bend a big player like that before a tournament just because yeah. like they're old and stuff. Like this is Mexico. You have to choose your best players. 
when they're still playing for you still right now. Like Ochoa is playing games for Mexico still right now. And like just yeah. to like not call him up for the Copa America is like disrespect to him. Yeah, like come on, at least give him like a Copa America and then maybe he can retire after Copa America, you know. That that'd be yeah, okay. after but Copa come America, on. then yeah, after Copa America you can you can go off. Yeah, he should have went yeah. off. He 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 should have went off after the World Cup, but they still kept him, so might as well just take him to, to Copa America. And we know that we know the Mexican Federation is a joke. We we know it's a joke. I so, know like, it, is. It, is, it is. So yeah, for Mexico, on I, I'll tell you what, I'll put the show. So I think I agree with you. I think I'll put quarterfinals max. Um, do we put them above Chile or below Chile? Actually, I put below above Chile. I would put them below. Yeah, because Chile have Greca. So yeah, yeah, I'm gonna put uh, below. Uh, yeah, where where did I put? Oh, sorry, I put Mexico here. Let me put them there. Okay, now we move on to the next one. So uh, I think it's now time we talk about Ecuador. Uh, All right, Ecuador. Man, Ecuador has so much talent. I love this team has so much talent. Esopinon, then you have um, Estrada, Plata, Caicedo. Caicedo for me is the best player. Caicedo is the best player, in my opinion. And listen, you didn't mention the best talents, Kendry Paez. Kendry Pius, Kendry Pius, yes, I forgot about it. Thank you for mentioning him. He's 100%. Mileish. 100%. He will go to Cup America. Yes, yeah, yeah. My only issue with Ecuador is actually I actually have two issues. I have an issue with the coach, Felix Sanchez, because I don't think that guy's a good coach. Another issue is that the goal scoring is also a big problem. Do you agree with me on this? Yeah. They got to rely on Ener Valencia again. Yeah. Although their defense is pretty good, I, I you can make an argument they might have one of the best defense their defense, in America. Their defense, they have a really good center back, Felix Torres. He's a playing at Corinthians, yeah. very very good center back. Pacho, Pacho is also good. Hincape is also good, obviously as well. Oh, Hincape, yeah, so, yeah, at Leverkusen, he has a winning mentality yeah. now. So, for Ecuador, in my opinion, the only thing that's I kind of may make me worried is that I think historically wise they've not been good at Copa Americas. If I you know, yeah. Think that, like they've they've been good in the qualifiers, but when Copa America comes, they just like they just screw up. The pressure gets to them. Yeah, and the thing is, like, do I trust Felix Sanchez? I don't know. I don't think I can trust him. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't he the Qatar coach. Yeah, and we saw how Qatar yeah, did the World Cup. Yeah, that no, was disaster. I don't, I don't <laughs> see. I, they can go quarterfinal. Like I see them talking the group anyway, because like. I think this is a favorable group. They're lucky that they have a favorable group like this, but I don't see them going past the quarterfinal. I think they could be a dark horse. I, I, I think they could be a dark horse. I mean, it depends who they face in quarterfinal. If they, if they get first, they'll probably face... You know what? They could make the semifinal because they face the second place of... Yeah, yeah. The Argentina. They place second place of Argentina's group. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think dark horse is fair. Would you agree? Yeah, they could probably make the semis. All right. Next up, it is United States, man. Uh, USA, man. I, USA. I, I'm worried, man. I'm worried, man. I'm worried. I'll let you take charge here. <laughs> I mean, we already know that USA have a re really good base. Like on paper, the players, they're really good. Really good team. Really good national team. And the thing that's the positive that USA have is like, they had the same base of players since, uh, like, 2019, 2020. Yes. So that's, like, a really positive thing because, like, they know each other. Yeah. The chemistry is there. Like, you got people like Pulisic, uh, McKenney, uh, Tyler Adams. And, like, those players are, like, the core of the national team. But the problem is, of course, uh, Greg Berhalter. Yeah, he's a bad coach. He's just vibes. Like, <laughs> he's just there. He's just there because he has, he's the friend of the FA of USA. Yeah, it's just the problem with the United States is that I feel like we're gonna do well in the group stage, but then are we gonna just are we gonna just do the a bare minimum? Just make the quarterfinals. Hey, that that's good enough for me. Because I I'm sorry to say, I, listen, listen. If they manage the top of the group, if that's a big if because they have Uruguay there. Yeah, we know if how good make, Uruguay is. We'll get them exactly. Yeah. <laughs> If they top the group, they couldn't make, they can make the semis because they're gonna face the second the second place of our group. Yeah. Which will be either Colombia or Paraguay, assumingly. 
But if they like, yeah, my... get second in the group, they're going to face like Brazil in the quarterfinal. Yeah, Brazil or Colombia. So yeah, yeah. And the pro- the problem with the United States is that we always done well against teams that we should be beating. But the problem is that whenever it comes times for teams we're not expected to beat, we never we never seem to do it under Burhalter. You know, <laughs> and that's the problem. Yeah, like... We can't just we can't punch above our weight. That's what I'm trying to say, basically. Yeah, like USA, they really have the team. Like they still have more yeah. players coming in, like Johnny Cardoso, very good midfielder. He could even like take play take Tyler Adams' spot. Even that's how, yeah. how highly I rate him. Like they have really good players coming up. And the pro- but the problem is, of course, the coach. Yeah, and, and we have so many good players like Pulisic. Pulisic has been amazing for Milan this season. You got Musa, like, Pulisic, been great Pulisic at Milan. Is, yeah, Pulisic has been great. Musa is even at Milan doing bits over there. Yeah, I got McKenny and Timothy Way doing their part at Juventus. Yeah, Gio Reyna. Um, even though he's not been playing you. much, we know how talented we know how talented he is. Exactly. Like I don't get what Berhalter's beef with Gio Reyna is, but like Reyna is very talented as well. Yeah, yeah and then Vickers, um, uh, <clears throat> Vickers, and then Matt Turner. Turner. They've Chris, Matt Turner, Chris Richards. Like uh, so much Dest is not gonna. Des is yeah, not Dest. going to Cup America. It's a huge That's a big blow. Them. How will USA because, like, replace him for the right back? Look, That's people, a big issue. People, like especially Barca fans, like to joke on Des, but like for USA, he's really good. And the thing is, Des brings so much to us offensively. Sure, he's not good defensively. I will admit, defensively, he's not that great. Offensively, though, he brings so much threat. I mean, we, we saw what he did in the World Cup. He was one of the best right backs in, that, in the World Cup, um, in the group stage at least. You know, so yeah, yeah I, I just don't know how USA is going to replace him. Uh, are we going to have Joe Scally? I mean, Joe Scally is probably the the most uh, common, most yeah, I mean, obvious. It seems that's the obvious one, but who knows what Berhalter is going to do? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say. If, I, I I I better not see Yedlin as a right back. <laughs> I, I have a feeling Yedlin is going to get called up. Oh, I even I even uh, told you like my USA squad that I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I put Yedlin I put Yedlin in there. Oh no, because like what <laughs> other right back does USA have? That's the thing, man. This is like, and that's another problem with Burhalter is that he lo- he also likes to play his favorites, like you know the likes of like Jed and these kind of players and these kind of you know. Yeah, it took, oh, really, very... long for, it took yeah. really long for him to like not call them up anymore. Yeah, so that's another thing. So for USA, the man, will, the thing, the thing, the good thing I will say about Burhalter is like at least he knows like the players alive. like really bad. Like I remember, like look, the goalkeeper situation, he handled that very well. <clears throat> yeah. Like, Zach Stefan, we already know he's not that guy. Like, he's been USA's yeah. number one for years. And then, like, after, pretty much that injury in the final against Mexico, that pretty much costed him his spot because Horvat had an insane game. And then Matt Turner yeah, went to the Gold Cup and then did very well. And then he became the starter for the World Cup and did well there. So, like, Matt Turner right now is USA's number one. Yeah. So, for the United States, man, I, I think we're a dark horse. I would have put us up, up below Ecuador, unfortunately. Yeah, it depends. Depends where you finish in the group because first, uh, first place you can you can make the semis. Second place, I think you're out of the quarterfinal. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I, I think I would, for it, it really depends where you finish in the group. I don't know. I feel like Ecuador is just. I feel like Ecuador just have a. They, they, they have a <clears> easier. Yeah, put, like put I think them below. Yeah, you could put USA yeah. below Ecuador. Yeah, and as much as I'm American, you know, I want to prop us up. You know, we're the host station and everything. I, I can't be biased. I, I can't, you know. the, the uh, You know. I mean, I will Ecuador's say this, better. though. I will say this. It's a tournament, right? And yeah. Anything can happen. Like, you can, you can yes. like, who knows? Maybe you, even USA can top the group over Uruguay. <laughs> and now we go to yeah. Uruguay. Yeah, I'm Uruguay, man. About them. <clears throat> Uruguay. So with Uruguay, we already know how the qualifiers, they've been great with yeah, Marcelo qualifiers. Bielsa. He's and been amazing. The thing, the thing with Uruguay is, like, they, I don't even, I think they will call Suarez and Cavani, but, like, they've been without them, and they've been great without them. They have Darwin Nunez actually scoring the goals for them. Yeah, and Valverde. They have, Valverde's been amazing. They have Valverde, Araujo. In the De La Cruz. Course. De La Cruz De La has been Cruz. amazing. Underrated, oh. underrated player, man. Underrated. People need respect. De La him, Cruz, man. I love, I love De La Cruz. He's been amazing at Flamengo. But for well, Uruguay, probably, Uruguay, De La Cruz is probably 
the best player on form right now for the national team. They have Arascaeta on the bench. Yeah. Like the midfield. Rush hats a good goal here. Yeah, midfield's great. great. Goalie. Um, and they have this young striker coming up. I don't even know if, get, if he's getting called up. He should get called up. His name is Luciano Rodriguez. He's been mm. he's a good striker in the Uruguayan league. Like he's very talented. And like he's gonna get a big move soon. And I think Uruguay should call him up. But because of how Cavani and Suarez have been doing at their clubs, I think they might go. And this will be their last tournament for Uruguay. But I don't I don't see them really starting for them because Biel says that type of guy, like once he has his team that he's been using a while, he's gonna keep most of the same eleven. Yeah. I think the thing with Uruguay is that they're so good historically speaking. I mean, they have won the most Copa Americas, then with Argentina, of course. For Uruguay, though, the only issue I have is Bielsa. I don't think Bielsa is good in tournament football. Oh, I will yeah, that's why I was going to tell you. Uh, Bielsa, he's a very, very good coach for qualifiers, for like those type of stuff. But when tournaments yeah, like actually league. come, yeah, but when tournaments actually come, he really like doesn't know what to do. Like, he's a good coach, don't get me wrong, but, like, when tournaments come, like, Cup America or World Cup, like, he screws up a lot. Because, like, it gets to his head, he overthinks a lot, and, like, it screws up. Like, I will give you a good example. He had Argentina 2002. They were, like, the favorites to win that World Cup, and they got grouped. Oh, my God. And Bielsa was the coach. I mean, it it is a long time ago. It is a long long time ago. But it's, like, it's... I don't think it's changing either. And the thing with this, I will say this, Uruguay, since 2011, the last time they pretty much won Copa America, they haven't made it past the quarterfinal. That is sad. That like that's, is that's, a good, sad. That's, a, that's a crazy stat out there. Because I'll even tell you this, since, 20, since uh, 2015, USA have made more semifinals in the Copa America than Uruguay did. Like, you know, like, that's not a great stat. Like, Uruguay, that, that's, that's sad. Like, Uruguay, obviously, like, everyone has them, like, as the third best national team in South America. But, like, Copa America, like, they haven't been doing that great. Like, they, they are obviously, like, the third choice that people think could win it if Brazil or Argentina don't. But, like, recently, they haven't been that great than the Copa America. And my issue with Uruguay is that, do you really think Nunes will be that guy for the entire tournament? Because I, mean, we'll I don't to see. know. We'll have to see that. because you never know. This is international football. Anything can happen. Like, Nunes could either have the best tournament of his life or he can just absolutely stink it up. So you, you think you think they want to either? You don't think you, you don't think it'll be like I mean, I, in the well, middle? It's, well, it's like the obvious thing. Like, either he does good or he, he doesn't. Yeah. And like, we, so for we, Uruguay... We even the last World Cup, they got grouped. We saw what happened. We saw Nunez was. But this is a new coach, new team. They improved a lot for sure. They've been like the old people, like Diego Godin. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how Uruguay does. I'll put them I'll put them contenders because it's like you gotta put them up there. Yeah. But that stat going for them is not really good. That's not really good for their side. Yeah, honestly, I feel like there are I feel like they kind of are getting a little overhyped in my opinion because of the oh look, they beat Brazil Argentina, you know. Like exactly. That's like what that. I'm saying. Like they're they're a qualifier team, Bielsa. Yeah. But we'll see, we'll see. Like Copa America, we'll see how they do. Yeah, yeah. Like, like who, for me, like, I'm trying to think. So let's assume they top the group, they will face they will face a pretty much either Chile or or Canada, or Peru, one of those. So like yeah. they have, they like they they should be favorites to go to the semis, right? Wait, actually, no, 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 no. Actually, no, actually, the semifinals is against a Group D uh, second place. I, well, no, Group D winner, I think. It'll be against a Group D winner, I think. So wait, if you were going to win the group, they face the winner of Group D. Well, assuming they beat, get past the quarterfinals, I think. No, I'm talking about the for quarterfinal. No, I'm talking for quarterfinal. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they'll play as a Group D runner-up, I think, which is gonna be either Brazil. Or, it could be either Brazil or Colombia. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, 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 that one, that one. <clears throat> you know what? That not, that's actually really hard for them because like yeah. Colombia is. We're gonna get to them now. Yeah, 
called I, Columbia. I think it's a good, this is a good segue to Colombia, right? Yeah, let's actually talk yeah. about Columbia now. Yeah, Colombia is like this yeah, very one. Good. They are also very good right now. I feel like people are sleeping on Colombia, honestly. This Copa America. Yeah, like people are talking about Uruguay going far because of how they're doing qualifiers. They beat Brazil, Argentina, Yelsa cooking, blah, blah, blah. But Colombia, Colombia for me, this is they're also contenders. Yeah, I, I think they have a great edge. I like, I like the team that they have. Um, you know, Hamas has still been go- cooking, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah, Hamas is still their best player right now. Luis Diaz they is have, also great. Then you have Muniz. Yeah, Lu- Luis Diaz has been great. They have the right winger from Fluminense, Juan Arias. He's been, he was good in the last couple of games. He started for Colombia. Yeah. Um, the midfield with... Um, what's that guy's name? Uh, Lerma? No, it's someone else. I forgot his, yeah, I forgot, I forgot his name. But yeah, no, uh, Colombia, they midfielder. He plays in Palmeiras. Yeah. I forgot his name. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll put in the editing when we edit the video. But yeah, Colombia, man, they've just been amazing. The only thing I have a little concern with is our, 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 how is that attack going to look like? Because for me, I'm because for me, because for me, I feel like I mean, they don't have a striker. Everything. Like, That's they, the they issue. don't have a striker. That's the problem for them as well. Yes, like, they don't the have a really goal. They don't have a goal scorer. Cause like I watched Colombia's yeah. games, I watched Co- Colombia's games recently. Like they are good, they play well, but the problem for them, they don't have a striker. Like Luis Diaz has to actually shoot, and they have yeah. Luis Diaz is pretty much the goal scorer. Yeah, and that's my one my worry is that I don't think Luis Diaz single handedly can win you a Copa America. <laughs> I mean, it's not single handedly. Think... Like they play well, but you know, I, but you, you know, know what like I mean. That. Like you need you need play a, a large contribution. You need, yeah, you need a you need a killer. You need someone that in the box you can play it too, and he'll finish it. You need that poacher at least, and Colombia doesn't yeah. have that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just like, they had this guy playing. They, they had this guy playing in Russia, but like I don't really think he's that guy to like really do something for you. And remember, Colombia's unbeaten. They're the only unbeaten nation that qualifiers right now, which is amazing. You know, so no, they're un- they've been undefeated. They've been undefeated since twenty twenty two. Yeah, that that's amazing. That's an incredible stat. Like the last game they mm-hmm. lost was to Argentina, one 0 in the qualifiers for the twenty two World Cup. Yeah. So would you put them above Uruguay or below Uruguay? Or this is honestly, actual... I could listen. I could put them above Uruguay because they possibly could face Uruguay in the quarterfinal, and I will not be surprised if they beat Uruguay in the quarterfinal. Yeah, and for me, honestly, look, given that last co- last Copa America, guess who eliminated Uruguay in the quarterfinal? It was Colombia. So remember, they gave a good game to Argentina. Them. Remember, Colombia gave a good game to Argentina. Yeah, they even had. Okay. They even made uh, Argentina go to penalties. Yeah. All right. And next up, man, it's your country, man, Brazil. Now the two favorites. The two yeah. favorites over here. Yeah. Brazil. So, <laughs> Brazil has to be favorite for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Brazil, man. I mean, so obviously, people are like sleeping on. They were sleeping on them. Okay, I'll, I'll take. Uh, so for Brazil, like I said, they, 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 like I feel like this is a team country. People are sleeping on the Copa America. Like, sure, it's not as good as it used to be, but it's still Brazil at the end of the day. Brazil still have the heritage. They still have the aura factor in the Copa America. They're the third most successful nation in Copa America. You know? Yeah, look, with Brazil, the thing with them is right now, obviously, they've been struggling a lot in the qualifiers and, like, hasn't been that great after the World Cup. But it's Brazil at the end of the day. You never know what they can do in the in Copa America. Like, yeah. They also we also got a new coach. We went we sacked Denise Dorval. and got Dorival Jr. He's and a good like, coach. We improved. We improved against England and uh, Spain, and those were like two big European nations. And no one expected us to beat any of them because we lost to Colombia, we lost to Argentina at home, drew to Venezuela, and all of that. But with Dorival, we beat England at Wembley and we drew to Spain at the Bernabeu. 
Yeah, that's amazing. So that's that's really good. That's a good start for Dorival Jr. And the thing with Tim is like he he's that type of coach that he can come into a team and change it immediately. Like he's like yeah. he's a more of a he's like Denise, he's someone you need more time with, but Dorival, like he's a more of a tournament guy. Like he's more or less that guy that goes he just comes, changes up the team, and he just does it he just does his simple things. Like it's not nothing over the top. Yeah, and remember, he made those big decisions. He's benched the big guys, like Casemiro's not there, which is a which is a big player. Yeah, like One he didn't Brazil's. call up Casemiro. Yeah. He didn't call up uh, Richarlison. Um, he's he was there for the World Cup. He made those big decisions. Didn't, didn't call up Gabriel Jesus. Jesus, yeah. Like the That's two, another one. the two strikers, the two strikers that Brazil called up, Enrique and Evan Nilsson, two young strikers, like two strikers that this is the first time going to the tournament. Yeah. The thing I and have like for the also, war- yeah, yeah. And for the thing is, if this is a Vinicius team. This is a Vinicius team now. He has to take charge. Yeah, well, well, now Neymar is not going to go to Copa America because of his injury. So, like, this is a good chance for Vinicius to do something for Brazil because with Brazil, with Real Madrid, Vinicius is the best player in the world. Yes. Same with Rodrigo. He's one of the best in the world. But at Brazil, they haven't done much. They yeah, and much. dude, I, man, I saw a stat that Vinicius got three international goals. That's actually sad. Yeah, that's not really good. That's not really good. But I will say this, like, Vinicius... He was decent at the World Cup, but like in the qualifiers and the friendlies, he doesn't do it. He doesn't play like he does at Real Madrid. But I will say this: I think he was better at the World Cup than he is in qualifier and the friendlies, just because uh, yeah, more, you yeah, get more, more preparation time. Yeah, more preparation time of the national team. So that probably that's probably what Vinicius needs. Like yeah. and friendlies and qualifiers, you only have like one or two weeks with the national team. Yeah. So, so, like, I'll see how, like, I'm not going to give up on Vinny yet. Like, this Cup America is his. Like, it has, like, he has to perform. And, like, he, his, he is on the Ballon d'Or list because he's yeah. been the best player in the world for Real Madrid. He needs to do well at the Cup America. And he knows it, too. He knows he has to turn over Brazil. And he knows Neymar's not there to hold his hand. Yeah. And for Brazil, like I said, man, like, like, like for the thing is, like, there's so much young talent coming through. You know, obviously, you got Paquetza, you know, you got, um, you know, uh, who else is coming through? You got Paqueta, um, Andrik, Paqueta, Arana, uh, you know, Arana. He's also, yeah. So, and like, like, there's a lot the of young. Thing, the thing with this one is, like, this is not the full squad because you can call up three more players to the Copa America. But, yeah. like, these 23 right now, all of them are going to Copa America, assuming nothing happens to them in these last few club games. So, so yeah, for the thing with this one, the thing with this one as well is like, I don't see Brazil winning it because this is too early for Dorival, too early, too early for yeah. for him. Like he just came in. Like I expect us to do good at Copa America. I expect us to make the final even, but I don't see us winning it. Like not now. I think after Copa America is when we will actually try to win stuff. Well, we're always going to try to win Copa America, but like after it, I think we'll actually win stuff. Yeah, and for Brazil, as I said, like Hendrik, man, can Hendrik pop up in this Copa America? But this is this also could be a big tournament for him. This is this is huge for Hendrik as well because he was the one who scored the winner at England and scored the banger at the Bernabeu. Yeah, so yeah, and it's gonna after be Copa America. After Copa America, he's going to Real Madrid. So like this summer is huge for him. Yeah, and then finally. Argentina. I mean, I think it goes without saying they're the favorites. They're the best nation yeah, right now easy. in the, easy. in the World Cup. Easy. I know. I, yeah. I know. As a I know as a Brazilian, it kind of pains you to say this, <laughs> um, but like being ob- objective, yeah, wise, yeah, being objective, they're, they're, they're the best. They are the favorites. Uh, they are, they are the favorites. And like, yeah, I expect them to win it with ease. They'll win it with ease. Like I don't see no one stopping them. Unfortunately. Yeah, I I don't I don't know if they'll win it with ease, but let's say they're the favorites. Look, I, I think we can like, agree that. If they don't win, for me, if they don't win, it's a failure <laughs> because they. I, are I think they have to. The best. They are the uh, best for me, they have to reach the final. They have to reach the final. For me, if they don't reach the final, it's a failure in my opinion. In my opinion. Yeah, if they don't reach the final, that's even worse. But like they're gonna reach the final, and I have them winning it sadly. 
Yeah, for Argentina, man, they're, they're, they're the best team in the world. You know, Scaloni's not madness. I mean, look at this team, man. Messi, McAllister, you know, you got Palacios is coming through. You got, um, uh, who else? Romero. You got, you got, you got Di Maria Martins. there. Di Maria. Di Maria's last tournament, I believe. So this, this will be is, insane. I, I feel like I feel like this is also Messi and Scaloni's last tournament as well for Argentina. Yeah. I remember, guys. So, like, the last probably, time a country. Win it. They're probably going to win it. They're probably going to win the Copa America uh, because it's going to be Di Maria, Messi, and Scaloni, possibly their last tournament for Argentina. Yeah, I remember. Um, I remember, like I said, the last time a country did a back to back Copa America was Chile in 2015 2016. Can RGA do that? <laughs> yeah, they could I probably remember. do what Spain did. Euros, yeah, the up, Spain. Euros again. Yeah, that that that, uh, and we could have a we could have a very interesting conversation with Argentina. I think the only issues I have, I have two issues with Argentina, is that are they coming into this tournament? Um, do you think that they're gonna? Do you think like? Do you think they should be scheduling better friendlies? Because that's kind of something that's been kind of a bit weird. I to mean, me. they've like, always they've been, been they've always been doing this. <laughs> they've always been doing this for a while. It's been for a long time. It's nothing new. Argentina, every time the tournament comes, they will always schedule a friendly against like a. Terrible national team. Like, yeah, I remember before the World Cup, even they scheduled a friend against uh, United Arab Emirates. Yeah, so like, they've always been doing this. So I don't think that's so. really the problem. I think I think you can say a problem could be like this whole entire team is going in with arrogance. They're going in very, yes. very confident. Yeah, and that, that could, might be a problem. Possibly. Yeah, that could be it. But like that's the one of the few problems. Like I have, I think yeah. like like, like the, all the players. They know they're the best in the world. They already beat Brazil at the Maracanã recently. And they're, like, yeah. going in. Two games lost in the last four years. So, it's like, yeah. they got everything going for them. That's what they think. Like, all the players, they're arrogant. They're going in with confidence. And we'll see. We'll see. I have them. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Um, but another issue also... Let's say if they don't win it, I will tell you it will be because of the arrogance and confidence. That's the only reason why they're not going to win if they don't win it. But I have them winning it. So, and, and another issue, another dilemma for Arjun Scaloni is that who's going to start up front, the striker position? Is it going to be Lautaro or is it going to be doing Alvarez? <clears throat> it should be Alvarez. It should be. Yeah, Alvarez I mean, we, because I, I mean, we saw what he did in the World Cup, man. We saw what he did in the World yeah, Cup, man. Lautaro, Lautaro is a good. He's a good striker, but like not the guy you'd expect to turn up in these big moments. Yeah, I think Latar is more of a guy that's not really a big game player, if that makes any yeah, sense. Yeah, like Alvarez is that guy. Like we yeah. saw the World Cup. He was good at the World Cup. Like he benched Lautaro in the World Cup. Yeah. And that was crazy because like he didn't really play much in the qualifiers. And I don't think was he part of the, I mean I know he played was part of the Copa America squad, but I don't think he played much in the Copa America. He didn't play a minute in the twenty twenty one Copa. It was Lautaro that started. And like, oh, okay, yeah, Lautaro was decent at that Copa America, but like uh, in the final, he did nothing against Brazil. So like yeah. Alvarez is that guy who can turn up. Like in the World Cup final, I know he didn't score, but like he was the one who had that link up play for the second goal. Yeah. So you have Argentina, man. They're the clear favorites, Scaloni. And yeah, man. So this will be interesting, man, for Argentina, man. Can they do back to back Copa Americas? Because we know back to back is hard. It's it's not easy. It's not easy to do. Like there's a, there's a reason why it's 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 not done very often. You would you you would agree with that, right? Yeah. The only time it was done really was in recent times was because it was in 2015, and then a year after the same. And yeah, Chile it was like a year after. The, yeah, it was like a year after, and Chile had the same exact team. So like not hard to do. Yeah. So this is our final tier list. So guys, so I think we can we generally agree. I had some slight disagreements, but I think for the most part, we mostly agreed. And yeah, man, it should be a fun Copa America, man. I'm very much looking forward to this Copa America, man. This one could be. I am too. Very interesting. It's gonna be a, very interesting. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good good Copa America. I'm excited. So, yeah. So I hope you guys did enjoy. Please remember to like and subscribe. Um, you know, get those likes up, man. And obviously, I'll leave a link to uh, Silva's Twitter if you guys want to follow him on Twitter. You know, get some insight. You know, he'll probably uh, active your um, Twitter, you know, tweeting about the Copa America games and all that good stuff. So you can um, follow him there and message him. And so, yeah, I mean, is there anything else we should add before we head off? No, I think that's it. Yeah. So, yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.